We're looking at May 21 production for North Dakota and contrasting that to April production. So uh, first of all, oil flat as a pancake. I mean, 0.4 percent increase. Uh, so a, a little surprising there since road restrictions had mostly come off and we were expecting more completion activity in May. I, I still am anticipating some improvement June, July and August, but we continue to see serious problems with frack crews. Uh, this week, my inspectors are reporting only eight frack crews in the field. Uh, at these prices, we would normally have 20 to 25 frack crews. Uh, so we made a few calls and we asked some questions and uh, they are trying with all their might to hire, uh, but they are not finding employees that want to come back into the industry and come back to North Dakota uh, to work on the frack crews. As you know, pre-pandemic, we were at 25 and during the, the deepest part of the pandemic in June, July of 2020, uh, they went down to one frack crew. So many of those people were let go and uh, many of them appear to have left the state. And so that they are struggling uh, very, very difficult to find employees. So very flat on the oil production. Meanwhile, gas production uh, went up 1%. And so uh, again, we continue to see those increasing gas oil ratios and the pressure on gas gathering and processing infrastructure and even when oil production remains flat, uh, we increase the, the need for gas capture uh, infrastructure and, and the need for future investment in gas capture. The great news there is, of course, that uh, natural gas prices have improved substantially. Uh, Henry Hub natural gas price is approaching $4, and we've not seen those kind of prices in, in a good long time. So um, that's encouraging on the natural gas front. It also has relieved a lot of the pressure on producers and operators because natural gas liquids are following suit. I know you're paying more at the pump. Propane, butane, ethane all follow that unleaded gasoline price up. And so it is now profitable uh, to separate out Y grade NGLs and move them down a pipeline to, to Kansas or to Texas uh, to be fractionated. And so that, you know, that red ink problem with uh, gas processing and, and gas prices has, uh, has disappeared as well. All of that bodes well for the future, uh, but our operators are being extremely disciplined in terms of, of adding rigs, uh, very slow about adding rigs. Uh, wouldn't be any fun if we didn't report on New Mexico. Uh, so uh, we topped them by about 140,000 a day in April, and uh, that margin decreased to about 90,000 a day in May. So uh, they are looming in our rearview mirror, and and we'll see just how long um, we can stay ahead in this race. But with only 23 rigs operating here and 75 operating in New Mexico. Uh, it's going to be a severe challenge. Now, New Mexico has implemented uh, some pretty draconian flurring regulations, and that's limiting their their upside, uh, as well as the, the drought conditions, because it's a very, very dry place. And we're very dry here, but still, we have a lot of fresh water flowing through this, this state. You know, I mean, even though um, there's not access to frack water in all the sloughs and little reservoirs around the state. Um, when, when we have 25 frack crews operating in the state uh, on a daily basis, they would use about the same amount of water that flowed past Bismarck in eight minutes. So, you know, we, we have a lot of fresh water in this state. Not to say that we aren't working on some innovative solutions to move away from that, uh, you know, just because it's the right thing to do. And, and so um, we're working with a couple of companies that are, are attempting some innovations to safely move produced water and start uh, increasing the amount of produced water that's used in hydraulic fracturing. <clears throat> so um, gas capture, we lost a little bit of ground. We're still above the 91%, uh, but we fell to 
2%, and that's a razor thin margin. Uh, as we go into the summer, and, and Justin can talk a little bit more about this, I'll pass the ball off to him, I guess, but uh, Hess has started their turnaround at Tioga, so that huge gas plant is down and uh, is is being expanded from 250 million a day to 400. Uh, and we probably would have seen, you know, very significant flaring, except that uh, um, outrigger at the, uh, I always mess up the name of the plant, but over there northwest Sanderson. of Williston, I'm sorry, Sanderson. Sanderson, at the Sanderson plant uh, has picked up most of that. So most of that has been, uh, um, off offloaded so in june uh, we issued 75 permits and uh, we haven't been there since before the pandemic so uh, that's great news as far as oil production it's hanging right on the revenue forecast uh, gas production right on the revenue forecast um, completions uh, just right on the revenue forecast so we're following everything there uh, the one thing that's well above is prices. So May prices exceeded the revenue forecast by about 19%. And today's prices look like they're 25% above revenue forecast. So state revenues should be extremely healthy. A new record in terms of the number of producing wells. So how did that happen with uh, not so many drilling rigs and half the frac crews that we would or less that we would expect to see? And so uh, they they carved into the non-completed well or the duck well count pretty substantially. It went from uh, 731 to 677. So uh, they're, they're actually um, cutting into that. One of the interesting little aspects in the well count is for the first time ever, we have a county with more than 5,000 active producing wells. That's McKenzie County. Never had that before. And to put that in context, um, in April of 2006, as they were drilling the first big Bakken well over in partial, statewide we had 3,525 wells. So McKenzie County all by itself has 150% of the wells that, that the whole state had in 2006. That's, uh, that's how big the expansion in McKenzie County has been. Uh, Fort Berthold has run kind of counter to the rest of the state, uh, down two drilling rigs, down 19,000 barrels a day, um, uh, a little bit of an increase in active wells, uh, big decrease in wells waiting on completion. And we're gonna have to look into this more. I don't have the answer for you because I, I just did the number uh, this morning. But um, the fee area of Fort Berthold is really where we're struggling to meet gas capture. Uh, in fact, we're not meeting it. Active wells, uh, big decrease in wells waiting on completion. And we're gonna have to look into this more. I don't have the answer for you because I, I just did the number uh, this morning. But um, the fee area of Fort Berthold is really where we're struggling to meet gas capture. Uh, in fact, we're not meeting it. We're at 84 percent. And so I was asking Justin if, if he knew uh, what was going on there. He doesn't have the answer off the top of his head. Uh, so we'll look into that a little bit more and and see if we can figure out what's causing. Uh, that would be the area south of Newtown. You know, so it, it would be, you know, the Van Hook, Big Bend uh, area that's uh, it's got more flaring than normal or than one would expect. I um, want to make a comment about U.S. crude oil stocks. Very, very low. OK, we're approaching the bottom of the five year band. And so um, the the impact of uh, pretty anemic <coughs> rig counts and uh, substantially recovered demand has pulled uh, that crude oil in storage way down. And, and so uh, I mean, we're not we're not in desperate shape because we're still within the five year band, but you can see that it's been decreasing eight, eight weeks in a row. Those inventories decreased and worldwide inventories are decreasing. So you saw a lot of 
Uh, for the first time, really since the pandemic, we saw OPEC really arguing with each other about what this should look like uh, in January of 2022. And they, they did finally reach an agreement and it looks like uh, uh, United Arab Emirates is going to get its way. Uh, they're going to get an increased baseline. Uh, and so they're going to start uh, increasing by 400,000 barrels per day on a monthly basis uh, going forward. So we should see stable gasoline prices and, and stable crude prices. And what when they were really uh, going at each other, you saw those high, high 70s, uh, but we've seen a two, three, four dollar drop in crude prices since they came to that agreement. So it's fallen back into the, the low 70s.